As much as I love the joy of Christmas, its anticipation and the aftertaste of it, I love that it is over too. January arrived with the promises of the new beginnings and the suggestions of setting the goals, moving forward, achieving the results. It has always been so. I used to invent those goals, make up the plans, make lists, come up with the resolutions, only because everyone does it. Personal growth is apparently a must. And this was how I thought one should grow. There used to be a lot of stress and guilt around the failure about the things I did not achieve. The stress and failure were expected, to be honest, as the goals were supposed to be planned big and really unachievable in order to get out of comfort zone. All that was according to the recipes of success. Now I mostly invent the recipes for the kitchen, like these rhubarb and orange jam pinwheel scones. Yes, that's right, they were the scones according to recipe, but somehow they turned into the biscuits. And that was rather a nice surprise to go with one of my endless cups of tea of this hot January. The shy whisper of my soul told me once that what I really wanted was to find the recipe of peace, learn how to create it and be the source of it for the others, regardless of what was happening in the rest of the world. This was what I asked the God to guide me at the start of this year. I found out that the meaningful work and the sweet rest after helps me to feel peaceful. However, I'm learning to give myself the permission to rest and relax. My cups of tea help a lot. I found out that completing the tasks and seeing the results of them fills me with the peace as well. Even if they are just small things like finishing the embroidery or leaving the clean kitchen when I go to bed. I found out that taking care of my family out of love brings me peace as well. And I found out also that me time early in the morning spent reading, thinking and observing things does exactly the same. It is hard to find and measure the extraordinary results in all this. However, living by your own rules without seeking the approval of the others and seeing what has been created by our hands turned out to be very satisfying. Starting the day indulging in the aromas of coffee and the freshness of grass, kissed by the morning dew, hugging the warm, very well-fed pug who patiently is waiting for his turn of licking the rest of the coffee out of my cup when I finish. This all brings me to a wonderful zone of comfort, a magical feel of a magical day. Something I haven't used to and I love it. And I am not looking forward to lose it, getting out of it. I would love to experience more of this 
and I can't set my goals around looking after my feelings. After all, all these goals are supposed to enhance our feelings of meaningful existence, for example, and others, whatever our souls are looking for. Our peacock, Romeo, shares his comfort zone next to mine, and I am honored to be a part of it. Winston and Romeo cannot stand each other, but came to the mutual respect of each other's bad temper. I love the days like this, the days of the beautiful sunshine, warmth and inspiration, found in the feather of a peacock, the morning butterfly, carelessly tasting the nectar from the straw flowers, the first tomato of the season, and many more other little details of the day. Ancient Greeks and Romans believed that creative inspiration arrived in the form of a visiting spirit, like guardian angel. They thought we could welcome it, but not influence it. But I believe if we choose to cultivate creativity, we can travel an exciting journey by accepting the world around us and consciously opening ourselves to the arrival of the ideas from unexpected places in unexpected ways. Changing the way we look at things, bringing the touch of whimsy into our focus can reveal the extraordinary in the most ordinary. That helped me to start seeing the world I took for granted in a whole new light. And quite often, it is all about tiny details. I find so adorable that Rosa, the cow, loves strawberries and always use the chance to make her happy every time I'm in the garden. Do you think she will give the strawberry milk when she grows up? I guess the main goal for me for now is to live through this luxurious January, having time for all what summer can offer. And we can still anticipate the new discoveries of the new year, keep dreaming, listen to the orchestra of cicadas, and be so grateful 
for the blissful moments. I am wishing you many of them this January.